Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Emil Vihandre and welcome to Fiscal Science. Our map for today is to give evidence for and describe the formation of heavier elements during star formation and evolution. Today's topic will be about nucleosynthesis. I hope you're familiar with chemical reactions because we will deal with them today. Nucleosynthesis is the process that creates new atomic nuclei from pre-existing nucleons and nuclei. Elements hydrogen and helium use nucleosynthesis to combine and construct the rest of the naturally occurring elements in our periodic table. Nucleosynthesis is divided into three parts. First, the Big Bang nucleosynthesis, next the Stellar nucleosynthesis, and the Supernova nucleosynthesis. Today, we're going to relate these to the formation of elements as our star evolved. The Hadron Epic It all started when the universe expanded and cooled down, making it possible for elements to form. Protons and electrons started to bond with one another. And when one proton and electron bonds, they form which element? Hydrogen, correct! And this was the first type of nucleosynthesis, the Big Bang nucleosynthesis. Remember, we had two elements as evidence for the Big Bang. And as hydrogen grew, the element helium began to form, which marks the end of the Big Bang nucleosynthesis. Hydrogen, helium, and dust began to come together and form the nebula. Over time, the hydrogen in the nebula is pulled together by its own gravity, heats up, and forms a main sequence star. The main sequence star, just like our sun, focuses on burning hydrogen so that it can produce lots and lots of helium by nuclear fusion. We have two types of nuclear reactions found in the main sequence star. These reactions only result in hydrogen being converted to helium. The difference is in the size. For smaller main sequence stars just like our sun, only the proton-proton chain is required for conversion of hydrogen. But for larger main sequence stars, it requires both the proton-proton chain and the CNO process for conversion of hydrogen to helium. The proton-proton, just like the name, has to start with two protons colliding. This reaction has three steps in converting hydrogen to helium. When a proton collides with another proton, it produces deuterium, a positron, and a neutrino. In equation form, we represent on the left a proton similar to the hydrogen atom. We write deuterium as 2H since it's an isotope for hydrogen. In the next step, we use the product from the previous reaction to produce helium-3 and gamma radiation. Finally, we use helium-3 to produce a more stable helium-4 and more protons to repeat the proton-proton chain. The other version of the proton-proton chain will yield more isotopes such as beryllium and lithium. Fusing helium-3 and helium-4, we produce beryllium-7 and gamma radiation. By using this beryllium-7 and fusing this with an electron, produces the isotope lithium-7 and a neutrino. Finally, Lithium-7 and a proton fuse to produce two helium-4 isotopes. The last type of proton-proton chain will fuse beryllium-7 and a proton, which will end in producing two helium isotopes. For larger main sequence stars, there's another way to make helium out of hydrogen. Using the carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, the CNO cycle. This converts hydrogen into carbon and helium. With the start of the main sequence star producing more elements such as beryllium, lithium, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen marks the start, start of the stellar nucleosynthesis. 
now our main sequence star changes into a red supergiant which makes it possible to create more elements. Based on the name, a star caused the nucleosynthesis. By just looking inside the stars, show some of the elements produced in stellar nucleosynthesis. We have the most abundant hydrogen and helium. Then we have carbon, which led to oxygen, which produced neon, which yielded magnesium, then silicon, and finally iron in its core. Stellar nucleosynthesis creates elements after helium and up to iron. Now by looking back at the chemical reactions earlier, we now have the proton-proton chain producing helium. We also have the proton-proton chain number 2 and 3 also producing helium. And finally, the CNO process which leaves us with carbon and helium. Now if you notice, we have a lot of heliums. And what do we do now? The alpha process is where we fuse elements starting with carbon with the alpha particles to form new elements. The alpha process then combines helium with carbon to produce heavier elements, but only those with an even number of protons. Combinations go on in order. We have carbon plus helium produces oxygen. Oxygen plus helium produces neon, so on and so forth, up to chromium plus helium produces iron. Now for the last type of nucleosynthesis, the supernova nucleosynthesis. When a red supergiant consumes all its elements, even up to iron, it begins to explode like a supernova. A supernova nucleosynthesis covers up to uranium which is a heavy element. Fusing heavy elements will be a problem since heavy elements are abundant in particles which makes it difficult to fuse. They just repel one another. How can we fuse with heavy elements? It's when a neutron bonds with a heavy element. But after that, the neutron undergoes beta decay while attached to that element. By doing so, changes the neutron into a proton which transmutes the heavy element. This is only possible when there are lots of neutrons, and this only occurs when a star explodes in a supernova, and this scatters particles, neutrons, into space. When neutrons attach to a heavy element, it transmutes the element quickly. Now we call this process the R process or rapid process. This R process can only occur in supernovas. Remember that heavy elements occurring from supernovas are different from those which are man-made. I hope you learned something. See you in the next video. Goodbye!